Yo, it's Elliot with Yo Elliot. You got strength questions, I got your answers. Yo Elliot. Today we got a question from Weidel, whatever, of the UK. Dude, that I cannot pronounce your name, wants to know, how can me and my friend quit smoking and where can we get some motivation for this? Well, very first thing I'm going to say is thank you for sending me your question. And secondly, I would invite you to consider that motivation is not your problem. Your problem is lack of awareness. Most of our problems stem from lack of awareness. Well, what am I talking about? Well, generally speaking, we all fall into automatic patterns. We live our lives on autopilot. So let's use a couple simple examples just to draw the point home. Cross your arms. Real simple, it basically comes automatically. You dive one arm through the other one. Well, what I would ask you to do is try it the other way around. Dive your other hand, hand over and the other one under. Now you notice how strange and difficult that was, you actually had to think about it and how uncomfortable it was when you actually did it? Well, that's the difference between something that's automatic and completely unconscious and something that requires awareness. The first one, automatic. The other one, you needed some awareness. You actually had to think about it. You had to be in the moment and understand and, and perceive what it is that you were doing. Another really good example of an automatic behavior would be uh, when you're driving your car. Very first thing that you do when you get in your car, bang, you throw your key in the ignition, you turn in the ignition, and you're off. Very rarely do you go and look for the, for the ignition hole with your key. You just don't do that because you've got that automatic motor engram situated in your nervous system, in your body. It's just, if you get to a friend's car, or if you, you get a rental car, for at least a week or so, especially at nighttime, you're going to be like looking for that ignition switch to get your key into because you just haven't developed that motor engram. You have to be aware, you have to be conscious of that particular behavior. So when we go about our lives, we have made certain choices early on that, uh, that we then just continue to make until they became completely automatic. A lot of the choices are good, a lot of the choices are bad. So for example, I've got four children. And when I had my first daughter, just like all great brand new parents, you use like all types of flowery language and you, you hug and you kiss and you just really, you gush over your child and you want to do everything perfectly and right. Well, over time, as my daughter grew and I added another, another, and another daughter to my, or child to my, uh, my family, I started saying things like, shut up! which I would never have done way back then. To the point where now, my kids just make noise and it's just completely chaotic at my house, and I find myself just, I don't even find myself, that's the whole point. I'll just shout out, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, to the point where it's become completely unconscious and it's a behavior that's detrimental to me, my family, and my children. So in order to rectify that, I had to make a conscious effort that every time the word shut up was about to come out of my mouth, I had to listen to myself say it, and then choose a different behavior. With regard to your smoking, you at some point decided to choose uh, to, to smoke, the same way I decided to say shut up to my daughter. Um, and at that time, you were conscious of it, just like I was conscious of it. I was like, the, the very first time I said shut up, I was completely conscious of it. I knew what I was doing. I was like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to say it, shut up. And then it got easy. I got easier and easier to now where I described it being automatic. Well, the very first time that you smoked a cigarette, you really had to think about it. You made a choice and you decided to stick with that choice. You probably smoked it and maybe coughed and felt terrible and just was like, you know what, but I'm going to do it, I'm going to stick to it, I'm going to make it happen. Over the course of a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, now it's like you're lighting up after every meal, after every drink, every time you bone your girlfriend, you're putting a cigarette in your mouth. So it then just became a completely unconscious behavior that you chose to do early on, but now don't even know that you're doing it. 
Now, of course, there are all these, all the chemicals that are associated with addiction, the, the physiological addiction, but I'm going to say that you're stronger, and I'm going to say that we are all stronger than the physiological addiction, to the physical addiction to these things, alcohol, smoking, cigarettes. Um, there is validity there, but I think that your consciousness, I think that your, your will can always overcome those, in other words, your spirit stronger than your body. You can do this. Fuck what they say about your body and, and, and chemicals. You can do this if you set your mind to it, you become aware of your smoking. So what I'm saying is, to bring it full circle, is that you're smoking because you're not aware that you're smoking, or you're not aware of what smoking does to you. Now you know consciously, oh, it's supposed to be bad for me, I don't know, I smoke, I'm okay, I can do whatever I have to do. You don't see your lungs, you don't feel your lungs deteriorating every time you smoke a cigarette. So you're completely unconscious of it, there's really no attention drawn to it, so you have to now make a practice of drawing attention to your smoking, the same way I had to when I was, when I would yell shut up to my children. I see it coming. You've got to be complete. One of the things that I would like people to learn how to do, and I think is very important, is to be, learn how to be self-objective. Literally, remove yourself from yourself and watch yourself. It, it sounds strange, and hopefully you understand what I'm saying, but you literally have to step outside of yourself and watch what you're doing in order to be able to change behaviors. That's called awareness. So when the word shut up would come to my, would be coming up out of my body and I can see myself about to say it, I stop for a moment, create a space, and in that space is the power to choose. Create a space, bang, I'm about to smoke a cigarette, stop for a moment, create a space, pay attention to what you're doing. Okay? Now that you're aware that you're smoking, you can choose whether you want to or not. And you just do that a couple times, several times, you know, a week, two weeks. I'm not promising to have the, the, the answer to quit smoking here, but what I do want to invite you to do and everyone to do is to start becoming more conscious of your automatic behaviors, especially the ones that are no longer serving you. I think I probably rambled way too much in this video, but I think this is an important topic. You know, it, it, just becoming aware of stupid things will allow you to stop doing stupid things. Most stupid people don't know that they're stupid. That's why they're stupid. Most people that do stupid shit, they don't know that they're doing stupid shit. In fact, they think their stupid shit is great, if you ask them. That's why women continue to, to get into relationships with men that beat them. Now, you know that you got beat up by your last boyfriend, and you know this guy has a tendency to beat people. He's got aggressive behaviors. Why are you dating him? You could literally, if you, because you can be conscious of other people, it's a lot easier to look at them and say, you idiot, you're dating the same type of guy. But she's completely unconscious. So people who have addictive behaviors, i.e. smokers, will perhaps quit smoking but then become addicted to something else. Because it's the consciousness, it's a lack of awareness, it's not the actual behavior that's the problem. So for example, if you're, if you're carrying around a bag of rocks everywhere you go, you know, you're just, just carrying a, a knapsack full of stones, heavy stones and, like, and bricks. Well, I don't have to tell you, hey stupid, stop carrying those bricks. All I gotta do is tell you, hey buddy, you know you're carrying bricks? And just you taking that moment, that pattern interrupt, taking a look at the bag that you're carrying, you're eventually going to drop the stupid bag because it's no longer serving you. So, bottom line, bring more awareness to your behaviors, stop and create space between your, you, your uh, stimulus and response, because a lot of times there are stimuluses that create our responses. So, uh, smoking, bang, uh, or eating food, bang, smoke, or um, children screaming, shut up! There's stimulus response. Create a space, be aware that you have choices, and choose something different. That's it, that's all. Keep sending me your questions. I love them. I'm gonna hit, try to hit them up as quickly as possible. I'm Elliot, yo Elliot, talk to you next time. Yo Elliot! <laughs>